Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Guido Trevellini. Um, I work for an organization called Aliante. It's a technical organization. This is a technical presentation. And uh, it uh, regards some experience uh, we had with uh, uh, Manitese and the WWF and the NICOFA, which is an NGO from Kenya, about uh, participatory mapping uh, of biodiversity in the eastern Mao forest. Uh, this means that I would like to switch uh, from uh, the relationship between the human communities, the democracy, the political, um, the agriculture, the uh, managed territory, as I heard uh, a few words ago, to nature. Because uh, uh, we think that um, nature, and uh, especially tropical forests, uh, they are still behind uh, uh, and biodiversity, they are still behind uh, the power of the communities living in, the, especially in these areas of the world. And also the seeds, the biodiversity of the seeds of the agriculture, finally they come from the biodiversity of nature. So the work has been done in 2013, and uh, um, the first phase of the work was a workshop with the community. So basically we clustered uh, 19 informants um, whose profile was uh, what, you, what, what, what you see there. So farmers, cattle raisers, hunters, beekeepers, and herbalists, in order to work together with them for realizing a participatory assessment of the biodiversity of the Mau Forest. Mau Forest is one of the most important mountain rainforest that still exists in the world. It's inhabited basically by a population that's called uh, OGEC, they are basically beekeepers, and, uh, um, and, and, and not only, and, but, but that is the traditional um, activity. So we mapped the biodiversity and the ecosystem services to understand what is happening in this forest. The main problem of this forest is the plantations, plantations of uh, exotic wood planted by the state in order to realize furniture which has decreased dramatically the level of biodiversity in the area. We were requested in the beginning to, to do some lessons in order to get in touch with the community and to explain the basic concept of ecology, allowing the people to, to realize um, by themselves a forest uh, participatory plan in the future. But after this phase, together with the population, we started collecting data, collecting data from the population. And we identified together with them some targets. Targets means target species for biodiversity, but not only. Also ecosystem services, as you will see in a few slides, uh, like uh, hunting, beekeeping, uh, or fishing in the forest. Um, in order to ensure people to talk about uh, the same species we were meaning by the scientific point of view, I mean, in order to ensure ourselves to understand them, because they were collecting data, not us. We asked them also to, um, to give us the name in the double language, which was Old Yak language and a Maasai language. There is a part of the community composed by, the Ma uh, by, by Maasai also there. So basically, we mapped biodiversity uh, regarding basically uh, birds and mammals. Uh, ecosystem services, and uh, uh, also identification of threats and fragmentation analysis of the forest, and also potential touristic sites uh, intended as ecosystem services because tourism can bring resources. I don't know if this picture is, is uh, really visible, but I mean, this is uh, just a moment from the workshop. And these are some of the maps we produced uh, where people were requested to draw physically on the map, identifying all the targets that I have uh, um, reported uh, up to now. Uh, this is another moment of the people working actively uh, on, um, on software also, on GIS, and, uh, and using also technology. And uh, let, me see, let me say that the relationship and the results of the use of the highest technology with the community was very good. They really liked that and they really got involved in the work. So uh, mapping the ecosystem services as tourism site, I said, it was as, a, as an example, caves, waterfalls, traditionally apiary sites, forest transects, and monument trees. So the community wanted to realize 
a work of tourism in order to bring money and resources to the forest. And uh, regarding the biodiversity, and uh, people mapped, I said, and they started drawing in the map uh, the presence and the absence uh, of the animals. And some sentences, they were very interesting for us. As an example, some people, they said some disappeared species elsewhere remained in Chibuin. Chibuin is the largest area of the forest. So people started explicating to us that where the forest was intact, that was intact, where the, where, where the forest was uh, uh, a, good, um, um, a good quality forest, some species, the most delicate species, animal species, they remained. In other areas, they went away. And the same, doing interviews with, uh, um, with um, uh, people collecting uh, um, uh, resources uh, in the wood. People explained to us that uh, uh, comparing the situation of now with the situation of before, they had to work more because some resources as wood, as medicine, medicine coming from the forest, they disappeared in many areas of the forest. We also used a map from the University of Maryland based on satellite data to understand if the results that we, were, we were collecting they were correct and they were. Mapping biodiversity, animal biodiversity, it was based basically on the use of two different taxa, two animal groups, birds and mammals. And uh, uh, we used the double criteria using scientific literature to ide identify a checklist of sensitive species to the quality of the forest, uh, and another checklist from BirdLife International to understand uh, which species they were belonging to the monk forest. So people, they were re requested area per area, every field is an area of the forest, uh, to say zero if the species was detected by them as absent, one if the species was detected sometimes, and two if they considered the species to be very present. So this, was, uh, uh, this matrix was a tool for us uh, in order to um, create an objectivity in order to create uh, also numeric value about uh, the species detectability from, 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 from the people. So we, and uh, I think that we can say that there is an objectivity because uh, as you see, it's based on average. So both the species and the areas, they finally has a value identifying which are the most sensitive species and the most important areas. And this is based, all of this is based uh, on the uh, detectability of the species living in this forest. The same was done with the mammals, I will be very short. And this is the result. The, the two columns on the right are respectively the plantation areas where there is exotic wood. And uh, uh, so where well, the original forest has been destroyed, but there is still a wood. So some people, they could say that there is a wood, but it's, it's a monospecific exotic wood. And the other are the open areas. Now you can see that the judgment realized species by species by the people, by the people from the community, tr with data treated in this way, told us that not only the open areas where the forest had been destroyed, but also the areas where the forest had been replaced by a monospecific exotic forest, basically, those areas, they saw their biodiversity crash down. You can see here some pictures uh, from the forest. I don't know, I hope they are not too much. Uh, I hope they are visible because of the light. And this is the exotic plantation. Can, 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 can you see the difference? So basically, it's finally not a surprise that the people, species by species, they said that they were not able to detect any biodiversity in the new, um, in, in, in the new wooded area because, because this area was plantation. We also did field work. We placed some photographic traps in the wood to, uh, to, to detect uh, also by scientific research the, the, um, the, the species in the forest. And again, basically the result was the fact that in the most ruined areas, in the areas uh, which were close to the plantation, uh, the, the set of the species we could find was very um, generalistic. I mean, species like the Ahina is an example species that are able to, be, to, to, to live close to the man.
instead some species, the most delicate species, they were living only in the places of the forest where the forest was still untouched, where the, where the forest was still a good quality forest. This was a qualitative data collection and uh, um, it basically reconfirmed the result of the participatory workshop. I try to, to go faster. So let me draw a few conclusions about the work we did in the Mount Forest that before together, together with the community and then using direct research on the field. Our informants, there were 19, understood, discussed, and gained some important concepts useful to participate to a forest management plan. The concepts shouldn't be forgotten in the extension of the management plan. They should be strength, strengthened and spread to the other people of the community. The people, they showed a good level of interest, also for technology, really, really, really good level of interest, as well as a sense of a protection for their own forest. So this, the sense of ownership of the forest was, uh, was very good after this work. The development of a community-based tourism can only increase this will with positive results. Some traditional habit, habits, the reported clan structure, could bring, could br could bring something positive positive to the management of the, of the Kiptunga forest. I'm referring to, to a day when I, was working, when I was walking in the forest together with uh, one of the leaders from the community. And he was explaining to me that before the Mao forest was managed, was uh, owned by the communities, that the different uh, group of the communities, they could hunt. They could hunt, but nobody hunted too much because the different group, they were checking each other. Instead, after removing the possibility to hunt, so after removing the, the control commun from, a from, from a community to another, some poaching were detected. So basically giving the management of the forest to the community is very important. It's very important because there is ownership and there is control of a resource which is considered absolutely owned by the community. This first work, work with the community has provided the first frame of the Kiptunga forest, this is the name of the forest, under the ecological and touristic point of view. Participatory data about the detectability of wildlife seems to fit with the widely known situation of the ecological fragmentation of the forest. What we see as a forest is a forest in some areas and is very fragmented elsewhere and represent a strong demonstration of ecological theories. Other fieldwork ongoing is necessary and could in the long term confirm the result from the participatory assessment. A larger sample is necessary as well as sampling other areas of the forest. And finally, what we did after the, mean, uh, after, after the mean mission was a GIS work trying to investigate, to, to investigate uh, on uh, remote sensing pictures and GIS uh, which area of the forest that they were forest and which area of the forest there were plantations. What was good and what was not. We took some GPS points in the wood, of course. And this is the situation. What, what we see as a, as a um, uh, big block of forest uh, is this stuff in, 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 in reality. So this is the forest. These are plantation areas. These are open areas. This is all together. And if you remove plantation areas and open areas, you get this. So you can understand which is the level of the fragmentation of this forest uh, due to the plantations and due to the, to, the, to, to, the, to the usage. So finally, what to do? A large scale work on the ecological connecti on, uh, connectivity of the wool eastern Mau forest uh, would be very important. And we started. We started mapping, uh, you see the yellow dots, all the bridges, all the points which are so important to connect the area of the forest that uh, risk to be completely fragmented. This can be started by a clear mapping of the indigenous forest and its fragmentation agents. The different area of the forest should be connected, as I said. The western areas um, seem to have a larger risk of ecological isolation than the eastern areas, which is larger and reported as more untouched. Keeping a look to the south Mau forest, which is uh, another block of forest where WWF International is working, would be very important. The existence of the Great South Ecological Corridor should be assessed. You see the South Mau Forest. 
Yeah. I finished. Thank you.